Hello there, and welcome back once again to this high quality family programming. <laughs> yeah, right. Who am I kidding? Uh, well, today, maybe you can see I've got a pile of things in front of me a couple of acro bees, a couple of tiny whoops. Today's topic is we're going to learn how to work with smart audio. Essentially, there's three different ways that we can change your video channel using smart audio, and I'm going to get into two of those methods. One of which is we can use the CLI, the second is we can use the OSD, and the third that we're not going to get into today is going to be using the Lua script and the Tyrannus. The reason why I'm not going to get into that one is once the beta flight series is completed, I'm going to do a whole entire series on the Tyrannus and setting up Lua scripts and controlling smart audio and all that jazz is going to be part of it. It's also a little bit more advanced to get something like that set up and working. Um, and honestly, I'm not even sure if the Lua script is going to work with an acro beat because I've never tried. I guess it's going to really depend on how your receiver is set up and whether or not you're running something like Crossfire. And with all that said, I'm going to show you two of those methods, the CLI and also the OSD method and how to access and control smart audio. I think the first place that we're gonna get started is through the CLI, and this is actually the best place to get started. And the reason is, if you've done a new build and you need to configure your VTX to be on a specific channel, well, this is the easiest way. Chances are you've already got the thing plugged into the computer, and really how much more effort is it to go in and change a couple of lines in the CLI? I understand it can be a little confusing because it's a pretty advanced tool. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get yourself into trouble pretty quickly. But I've got some tips to make things a little bit easier and hopefully help out a little bit as you're learning to use the CLI. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my quad. This is an Acrobe Light. Uh, it's featuring a beta FPV frame for 7mm motors. I like a little bit more oomph behind my tiny whoops and the 7mm motors give some good torque. But anyway, let's plug this thing in and we're going to take a look at that CLI. With the Acrobe plugged into the computer, I'm just simply going to hit connect, making sure I have the right COM port selected, and I'm going to shoot right over to the CLI tab. Now of course, if you know these commands, you can just simply type them right in and go about your business. But this is a pretty complicated and elaborate area. And I don't know all the commands, so how do we figure that out? In this case, it's really easy. Since we're working with Smart Audio, specifically configuring and setting up the VTX, I'm simply going to type in get VTX. See, that's literally it. Get VTX and enter. Now, we're going to get a little bit of feedback from this. And this is going to show us a whole bunch of stuff as to what is going on with the configuration of our VTX. This first top part here, nah, just ignore that for now. We're not so worried about it. Uh, this has to do with the OSD. We're not figuring the OSD today. But here's the first thing that we're worried about right here. And mine says VTX band equals five. Well, what the heck is that? That is actually setting my band and I'm on race band. So that's why it says equals, equals five. Now I made this quick little guide so you can kind of see what's going on here as far as the VTX band is concerned. So a value of one is equal to band A. A value of two, band B. Three is E. Four is fat shark. And five is race band. So depending on what band that I'm using here, I'm going to input that number here. So for example, if I was on the B band, I would change this to a number two. And it's pretty easy. So the way I would do that is I'd usually just copy this line and paste it down into the bottom. And then I can make my change here. So I'm just going to reset this to default. I'm just going to say VTX band equals one. That's A band. That's where it would come from. Chances are out of the box. And see, I actually messed up because I forgot one part. You actually have to tell it to set. So now see how you put in the command set VTX band equals one. And I hit enter. And this time it took the command and everything's good to go. And we're really gonna do the same thing for all of this. So if I wanna change the VTX channel, I'm just simply gonna copy this line. I'm gonna type in set, I'm gonna paste it, and let's change this back to say channel one again, just for the example, and I'm gonna hit enter. 
Below that, we have VTX power. This is going to tell the VTX what power output to use. With the Acroby, we only have two options. It's either one or two. If it's in one, it's going to be in pit mode. If it's two, it's going to be in high power mode, which is 25 milliwatts. This is going to change based on your VTX. You may need to experiment with these a little bit if you're using something else. Um, but whatever, this is going to be pretty consistent with most VTXs that you're using. Just know that this VTX power, anything else other than an Acro B, if it's on zero, that should be pit mode. One is normally the lowest, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So if you want it on max power, you might typically set this to say four if you're running a Unify and you want the 800 milliwatt output. Underneath this, we have the low power disarm. Uh, this thing is only doing 25 milliwatts, so I usually leave this option turned off. Uh, and then underneath that is the VTX half duplex. This isn't something that I really play with, nor have I ever found a reason to change. Once we've changed our band, our channel, and our power, I'm going to go back to the command line and I'm going to type save. I'm going to hit enter. The quad is going to reboot, and now our settings are going to be saved. I'm going to show you by reconnecting. Going back to the CLI and once again typing get VTX and you'll see that now we're on band one and we're on VTX channel one as well. All right, and then there's the method via the CLI, not too difficult. Just make sure that you pay attention to what you're inputting to make sure that the quad gets the correct commands and don't forget to save before you exit. If you don't type in save, it's not going to save and your channels aren't going to change. Now our next method is to use something like an OSD. I'm going to fire this thing up, I'm going to get you guys into the goggles and we're going to go over how to do the configuration via the OSD. Alright, I've got everything ready to go. Let's go into the goggles and we'll take a look at the OSD. Okay, so to get into the OSD menu, you're going to mid-throttle, yaw left, and pitch up. And then so now we'll get into the menu. You see we've got a few items in here, profile, features, OSD, miscellaneous, uh, so on and so forth. We're just going to jump into features, and you're going to use your right stick up and down. So you're going to pitch either forward or back to move this arrow. We're going to select it by doing a roll to the right. So now I'm in features. I want to change my VTX. Now, this is an acro B, so if you're doing something else, you might either have tramp or smart audio in here. You're going to need to select the appropriate one depending on your VTX. But in this case, I don't have any of that, so I'm just going to pick VTX. Now that we're in here, you're going to see that I have my band, race band, my channel, and my power. Again, depending on your VTX, you might have a few different options in here, but these are the basic things that we're going to configure for the Acro B. Uh, if I use my right stick and I push to either the left or the right, we're going to go through and we're going to pick different bands. I'm going to stay on race band because this is what I normally use. Now I'm just going to push down again on the right stick, so I'm pulling back on it. So I'm, I don't know, I guess I would technically be pitching up. And well, right now I'm on channel eight. I want to make that channel seven. So I am going to hit channel seven on that. I'm going to say back and it should save it. So there you are. There are two of the three methods and how to change your video channel, band, power, essentially using smart audio. And this is going to be very consistent with just about any VTX that you're going to use that has the smart audio feature. The one control method that we didn't really get into was via the Lua script and the transmitter. But again, that's a little bit more advanced and that's something that we're going to talk about within time. Well, that's all I got for today. Hopefully this video has helped make things a little bit easier for you. If it did, maybe you can help me reach one of my goals. This year, I want to hit 5,000 subscribers. So maybe I can convince you to click on that subscribe button and maybe you'll talk your friends into doing it as well. But I'm out of here. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.